with inflation right. where it is, even if it comes down to 5%, can the Fed really do that? I don't think they can. I mean, what are you going to do? Send inflation to 20%, make us Venezuela type thing. So, so it's, it's a really tricky scenario. And I don't think, I don't think investors have any clue or are preparing for this. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Gareth Soloway giving us his Bitcoin prediction for the current cycle. Soloway believes that Bitcoin will fall below $10,000 before the end of 2022. He also discusses how the Federal Reserve had been artificially pumping the stock markets through excessive money printing, but that since the U.S. government can no longer print money to support the economy, there will be a correction. Gareth Soloway explains it's important to follow the trend line and not to listen to fear in the market. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy what we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. You don't get the sense that people are at that point of throwing up their hands and just saying, oh my goodness, this is the worst yeah. ever, right? I mean, again, we are seeing a slowing of the economy, partially, by the way, because the markets are down. As people look at their 401ks and they're saying, well, you know, maybe I won't buy that car. Maybe I won't buy that house with interest mm -hmm. rates where they are. Maybe we won't take this next vacation after the one post-COVID that we already had planned. So I think there's there's this definite sense of a slowing economy. Um, the question is how deep does it get? And my biggest fear here is that if we do go into a recession and every recession since really, I mean, you could even argue since 2000, but really since 2009, every dip has been met with this massive buying, massive printing of money to get us out of that. With inflation right. where it is, even if it comes down to 5%, can the Fed really do that? I don't think they can. I mean, what are you going to do? Send inflation to twenty percent, make us Venezuela type thing. So, so it's it's a really tricky scenario, and I don't think I don't think investors have any clue or are preparing for this. Everyone's been lulled into this false sense of security that the Fed will always be there to bail us out. And the question is, when you got inflation where it is, they can't bail us out, and there's right. basically no support underneath the market if it were to start to roll over via the Federal Reserve. You know, looking back, I was just looking at that today and looking back a year ago where the U.S. dollar was. And the U.S. dollar has, the DXY has gained about 15 to 18 percent, maybe even close to 20 percent in the last year. I mean, in currency markets, that's almost unheard of, at least in, in you, know, ad, you know, advanced economies like we have or like Europe has. So I think that's got to be something that investors pay attention to. And you have to look to what's going on with the gas shortages in Europe, how that's affecting, how it's affecting the, the investors over there and this and the people living there. And then also the worry about, well, you know, what's gonna happen when winter rolls again? We're now midsummer. winter's not that far away. Will there be gas? How will people heat their homes? Is it gonna cause a deeper recession with what is going on there with the supply chain and everything like that? So it is, it is a pretty wild scenario. I will say that I do have it penciled in that the dollar is topping here. So again, I do expect a bounce on the, on the Euro. He goes on to say that we've never been in a crypto period where the Fed has been hiking rates this frequently, and for Bitcoin, this is uncharted territory. Because of this downward shift, it's also a confirmation of the dip the S&P has seen over the last month. Um, if I show my chart here, I want to show you guys this. This is a pretty cool chart. So if I go to my monthly chart, you can see that there are two significant trend lines that the dollar is now hitting on. And again, number one is this trend line here through these highs and then this little pivot low here right across. And so I do think the dollar short term extremely extended. We've had moves like this in the past, but if you look at the size of this move to this move here, it's virtually the same distance now as this to this. So you also have some sort of measured move going on here with consolidation in the middle. So again, think about this. Think about the likelihood here. The dollar is nearing its kind of zenith in the short term that should give a bounce in the euro. And that's the one, again, as I mentioned, that's the one saving grace for the tech stocks like the NASDAQ, where we could get a little bit of a near-term bounce going into later this month where earnings start to come out. So again, I'm kind of in this position where I'm saying, okay, maybe over the next week or two, you might get a technology bounce, but then watch out once you get into those Apple and Amazon earnings. Right. But I don't know how much the, the public will see it, but I do think that that banks like JP Morgan and Citigroup and, and Goldman Sachs, they're all taking note and they're probably going back to the drawing board and looking and saying, OK, do we need to protect ourselves? How do we kind of plug any yeah. holes and let's keep let's keep a really close eye, you know, keep scanning for any of these breakages 
in the system. And we know that the repo market, right? I mean, the Federal Reserve's been mm -hmm. having crazy amounts of yep. repo being parked there. I mean, there, there's definitely some issues and this is probably all interconnected. And going back to your comments on Bitcoin is while, while things like this may not immediately impact Bitcoin, I do believe that the more instability globally, especially in the banking system, the more it pushes people to accept an alternate a t alternative currency, something like a Bitcoin. I mean, just right. think about all these people that are being affected in, in China and aren't able to get their money out of the banks. You know, think about some of them may not even have heard of Bitcoin before, maybe just passingly had heard of it. And now they're starting to say, listen, how do I avoid this in the future? Let me invest some of my money in Bitcoin. So this is one of those things where short term, I don't think it has a major impact on Bitcoin. We're not seeing Bitcoin rip higher today, but it is, it's just these little pinpricks in the financial system that is the building blocks for Bitcoin. If we do see a huge CPI surge and then we start to see it fall off at that point, because I think all eyes are on the United States right now with our, our current market, our current inflation, our current metrics overall, what happens to the rest of the globe when they start to see the US start to stabilize? Do you think this is a good, I'm, I'm assuming this is gonna be a good thing, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen is I don't know if this CPI print will be crazy high and then it'll start to come back in, but it's going to start to come back in just because of the commodity collapse. And also you saw this big jump in wages, but wages aren't continuing to go up at that crazy pace that they were over the past year. Right. So, so there's going to be some stabilization. And I think this is where the Fed is going to initially be able to claim victory. And I, I already see the writing on the wall where, you know, you're going to have all the media saying, hey, look, they did it. You know, the economy's like, you know, still hanging in there. We're not in a full out recession yet. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, the Fed takes credit. And then all of a sudden we fall off that cliff in terms of the economy, right? And and yeah. and I see it just, you know, you could just imagine how when these numbers, these CPI numbers start coming down, it's gonna look so great. Market's probably gonna love it at first, right? Oh, the Fed doesn't have to hike as much. And maybe, maybe we're gonna get a soft landing, a Goldilocks economy. And then you just see the writing on the wall here. I see people struggling already. If you look at defaults in, in auto loans, they're already starting to pop. And again, to me, these are the same signs we saw in 2007 going into 2008. I have two kinds of trades going. One is a swing trade where I'm just trying to play like the breakout and I'll be looking to take profits at 25.5 and then maybe the next resistance, the rest of it off the table. What you're referring to, Paul, is, is, is where I'm looking to accumulate a longer investment strategy or a longer position. And basically what I'm doing is I'm using the technicals coupled with kind of the fear index, right? So, so I love seeing kind of massive fear and panic in the Bitcoin market. It usually denotes at least a short term low. And then also looking at the chart, it's about where are the technical levels telling us it's going to go? I mean, the only thing I can think of is that is that when you have a deleveraging event like this, and again, I'm going to take it from that side, where you have a lot of leverage getting wiped out, it causes a much bigger price spike to the downside. And it ultimately really takes out all the weak investors. And it's almost like that, you know, if you have a wolf pack, you know, the, the weak ones aren't going to be able to stick with it and they're going to ah. fall by the wayside. So, so anyways, I mean, I, that's how I would take it where <laughs> at the end of this flush out, you're going to have the best, the hardcore, the, the dedicated, and those people aren't going to sell anymore. You've gotten rid of all the other mess. And then you can start kind of that strong base of a tree to grow higher again. I don't know if that's it, but that's what I'll go with. Gareth Soloway believes that the recession is soon to follow in 2022 and to keep an eye on Bitcoin. This is important for all crypto investors and traders not to fall into impulse actions when a bear market crash hits. Soloway says that entering the market without an exit strategy and taking on debt without fully comprehending the possibility of being liquidated is a recipe for a massive hit to your portfolio. What do you think about Soloway's price prediction for Bitcoin? Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.